Concern over growing violence in Indianapolis and the young people often at the center of it is reaching the White House tonight. Mayor Greg Ballard is in Washington, D.C. to talk to the president about the problem here. Only on 13, Eyewitness News reporter Kevin Rader also went to the White House for a presidential meeting on youth violence. Every day they stand outside the fence here at the White House just wondering what life is like on the inside. Well, today, inside the White House, the president is leading a discussion about how to curb teen violence in Indianapolis. Mayor Greg Ballard, a Republican, is one of those taking part in that debate. All along, Mayor Ballard has talked about the importance of family and parents and early intervention and early education and stronger action from local and federal prosecutors. But there are also some other things being kicked around in here today. Intervention as far as the MBA helping to serve as mentors in communities. That's one of the issues that Ballard talked to us about. It just isn't one thing. We just can't go to the, you know, these default options that we've done for, for so long now and expect it all to change. Uh, we have to really understand what is leading to all of this uh, and, and give these young, primarily young men, uh, more opportunity than they have in the past because so many of them just get lost in the system, uh, just lost. I mean, they don't graduate from high school and they're, uh, they're, they're just nowhere, right? And, and the numbers on that appear to be pretty staggering on, a, on an annual basis. And we have to fix that. Mayor Ballard has also long advocated hiring more police officers, putting more police officers on the streets of Indianapolis, but he has also said it's a much bigger problem than that. It's going to take more than that, and that is why he came to the White House to hear what other people in other major cities who are confronting the same problems that Indianapolis is currently having with violence, and specifically teen violence, to get some solutions. At the White House in Washington, Kevin Rader, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Kevin, thank you. And while the president and our mayor are in Washington right now looking for the answers to youth violence that we've been seeing, we set out today to find out what families here are saying about it. Eyewitness News reporter Rich Van White got a few surprises when he asked questions today, and he joins us now live. Rich? The surprises we're seeing out here tonight, Anne-Marie, are the fact that when we ask people, what's it going to take to reduce crime in your neighborhood on the streets, not one of them listed more prisons and more police as their first answer. All right, here we go, sweetheart. Dorothy Lilly has spent her life raising, teaching, and caring for children. Now she serves free summer lunches to the neighborhood kids. Here you go, my lady. They are hungry for attention and a safe place to play. Dorothy wants programs that strengthen families. But help parents become better parents, uh, fathers become better fathers, teach them how to talk with their children. Brent Martin talks to his children a lot. Although he has a handgun and a permit to carry it, Martin wants stricter gun control laws. Now we're establishing case after case I, I where people well. are clearly not making good decisions. With guns? With guns. Yes, you can. Sharon Trigg has two small children. Instead of more money for more prisons, she suggests... More community parks, more Mommy people can. involved with the schools, growing up with their children. I think that people just need to stop giving up on us because I feel like that's why a lot of students end up out here on the streets. 22-year-old Deidre Copeland found Youth Build Indy. Tell me the first thing you would do. The program helps dropouts earn a GED, teaches job and other life-saving skills. Angel Mims wishes she learned as a teenager. I don't need nobody to help me. I can do it on my own. They just gave me the opportunity and they won't give up on you. You got to create some type of self-accountability. Programs like these succeed where prisons fail, insists Dominique Johnson. He and others have been there. Nine out of ten, what they find is the streets. And with them finding the streets, they end up dead, prison, or just keep repeating the same cycle. It appears as if many believe the increasing cycle of crime won't be broken until a city does a bigger, better job of embracing its children. All right. Don't you love that big hug? That was the first thing that young man did as soon as he showed up for his free lunch. The experts say that social programs, educational programs, and other things intended to keep kids out of trouble cost more than prison, but they're an investment. The payback can take years to see in a lower crime rate in a city that's looking for immediate relief from the violence. 
Reporting live, Rich Van Wyk, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Rich, thank you. And tonight we continue to encourage you to join us and take a stand against crime in our community by taking the blue pledge and promising to call 911 when and if you see something suspicious. A lot of you have responded, and we have put together dozens of photos of you taking the blue pledge, and we posted them together on our website. You can easily add yours by going to WTHR.com, and you'll see the blue pledge link at the top of our homepage.